Hello Space Cadets and welcome to Mueller Planetarium Astronomy at Home. This is Zach Thompson, Planetarium Coordinator at the University of Nebraska State Museum at Morrill Hall in Lincoln, Nebraska. Wishing you all clear skies. Today we're going to explore the fall or autumn evening skies using our friend Stellarium. Look to the right of your screen for the web address stellarium.org being held up by our star buddies. Go there to download the software at home for free. You can explore on your own or join along with us. To get us started, we have our evening sky set up for whenever it's nice, clear, and dark. You may have to wait till we're well into the fall season for some of these patterns to be high up enough in the sky. However, here in the very, very early days of September, if you look towards the bottom of the screen, you will find that we are just around midnight. To get our bearings here, we first find the Big Dipper is low in the sky. We recall that the Big Dipper is part of a constellation Ursa Major, which is obscured by this tree. So there you see, Ursa Major, that's the Big Bear. The Big Dipper is just part of it. Now, during the fall season, the Big Dipper and the Bear tend to get lower in the sky. They don't disappear, but just keep in mind, if you have tall things in the way, it might make it more difficult to find this constellation. We then use the pointer stars in the Big Dipper to remember that we point to Polaris, which is Ursa Minor, which is part of the Little Dipper. So Polaris, our North Star, belongs to this constellation as well. And we like to use these because these constellations are in the sky all year long. It does not matter on what season it happens to be. But here's where we start to get into our fall patterns. We can really enjoy some of those. From Polaris here, we just come up here a little bit to the right. An arrow that takes us just over here to the right and we find a sideways M or a W or even a zigzag shape. So it all depends on what you want to see as you see us tracing it out here for you. Let's just highlight these five stars and you'll see what we're talking about. There is that crooked letter in the sky. This is known as Cassiopeia the Queen, a very vain queen in Greek mythology who loved herself so much that she said she was greater than the Greek gods, which incurred their wrath. They locked her on a chair and placed her up in the sky with her mirror so she could always look at herself, but she could never ever come down. So there is the vain queen to this day, high up in the sky overhead. Sometimes she looks more like a W or an M, in the fall season, when she's highest up in the sky, when it's more easy to see her, she's this sideways letter. So you can kind of pick whichever one you want. But that's really where we get into our fall constellations with Cassiopeia. But we have to start somewhere with something familiar. Big Dipper, point to Polaris, and then just over here, look for that crooked M or W. We move our sky over here to the east now. And first and foremost, this is a good time to remind you that if the full moon is out as it is, for this current sky that we're showing you, that's a problem. You're going to miss out on a lot of the night sky because it gives off light pollution. So we remove that light pollution and suddenly the sky gets darker. This is what you're going for. So don't go out when there's a full moon or if it's very bright. Wait till a sliver or crescent of a moon or no moon at all. And that's the best. We'll leave the sky this way just to bring that point home. Clear dark skies. But come back over here. The sky itself has not changed ex other than just how we're looking at it. So here, once again, we find Cassiopeia, the W shape. With these three stars that we're pointing out right here, these three, imagine that this is the top of an arrow. And here's the point of the arrow, this middle star. Now come down, and this is the body of the arrow that comes down to this star right here. This star belongs to another fall constellation known as Andromeda. This is the daughter of Cassiopeia, the queen. A very beautiful daughter, but besides just being beautiful, she was different from her mother because she was also a very good and kind person. Beauty was within her more than just on the outside, something that Cassiopeia never understood. And Cassiopeia was very, very jealous of her daughter, so she decided that one day she ought to sacrifice her daughter Andromeda to a great sea creature that would devour her whole. Which is why in this depiction of Andromeda, if you were to look very closely at her wrists, this is where Cassiopeia, her mother, lashed her to a rock to become supper for this big creature of the sea. Now it always takes a little bit of imagination for a good deal of these constellations, so it all depends on what you see. This is just 
one way to imagine it. There is no right or wrong way. It's all just whatever you see. Remember, when we put the labels and the outlines away, this is what the stars look like. You connect those dots your own way, whatever works for you. So again, Cassiopeia the W. Come down here like an arrow, and this star leads you to the rest of Andromeda. Let's just point her out once again. Sometimes it looks like a stick bug instead of just all of this, but whatever you happen to see. Now, Andromeda did not get sacrificed to the monster. Cassiopeia's plans were not successful, and that was thanks to the efforts of the hero Perseus, who is very close to them in the sky. It's easier to show you the outline of Perseus first. Imagine a wishbone. If you find Cassiopeia from that W shape, from this point of view, come down and look for that wishbone. None of these stars are very bright. There is one or two, but just give your eyes enough time to adapt and just kind of gaze around for familiar shapes, and then maybe you'll be able to see this. If you remember from August, Perseus, this is the constellation where the Perseid meteor shower comes from in the summertime, in the summertime. But otherwise, just to touch on Perseus here, since we have him highlighted, look what he's got in his hand. He has the head of Medusa, the Gorgon, the creature with snakes for hair. And so if you were to look at Medusa, you'd turn to stone. But Perseus found a way to get past all that. He had her look at her own reflection because he had a mirror that she saw. And though he kept the head of Medusa as a secret weapon in case he ever needed it, because it was still potent, it could still turn things, living things, into stone. Perseus is also one of the many sons of Zeus, so born to be great indeed. He happened along Andromeda here, saw that the creature, the sea creature, was about to devour her, and Perseus held up the head of Medusa, which turned the monster to stone, and it plummeted to the sea, never to bother anybody again. Meanwhile, Cassiopeia, the mean old queen, was left up there in the sky forever as a prisoner of what happens when you make the gods angry. There's also one other constellation in the sky, because how did Perseus get to Andromeda so quickly? Well, lucky for our story, we've got a flying horse. And it's not just any, if you recall from maybe just a little bit of knowing some Greek names, this is Pegasus, the flying horse, the winged horse in the sky. Let me move our sky a little bit more just to get a better view of him for the time being. Uh, this is a tricky one to imagine. Pegasus is always upside down and halfway in and out of the night sky. That's why we usually recommend looking just for the body of Pegasus, the square, or the autumn square. They aren't very bright stars, but compared to the stars in this part of the sky, they should stand out fairly well. Just look for a big square in the sky. And when you find that square, you see that it shares a star with Andromeda. So there's another way to connect and find these stars. And working our way back, remember, here's the end of the arrow. Here's the point of the arrow to reveal Cassiopeia. And then just below, or right next to Andromeda there, is Perseus, the hero. This is why it's important to remind again that the constellations, they're like puzzle pieces. When you find one, it's not too far to go to find another. And you fit them together to see the full sky. There is a wonderful deep sky object that is especially prominent in this time of year in the fall. And we can find that first by looking at Andromeda here. It might be difficult on a small screen. In fact, it definitely is difficult to see this on a small screen. But there is a deep sky object, the most distant thing you can see with the naked eye, just here off of this handle of Andromeda. This is the Andromeda Galaxy. The only way you will see it is with clear dark skies. You must be away from light pollution. Do not have a full moon out. and just your naked eye and you will see an object that is two and a half million light years away from us. That means the light you see in this image here is two and a half million years old. The light traveled through the universe for two and a half million years to reach your eyes. So you are in effect looking back in time. This is a nearby spiral galaxy, just a little bit larger than our own Milky Way. You don't need binoculars or a telescope just to see it, but you need those tools if you want to see greater detail, of course. Otherwise, with just your eyes, it's a little smudge against the sky. But it's best in the fall because that's when it tends to be high up enough in the sky, close to overhead, and that is definitely true the farther into fall that you go. 
So you've got these mythical creatures, these wonderful tales, and this is just to get started. You've also got a beautiful galaxy to enjoy. And finally, finally, last but not least, let's not forget that there is a planet there in the sky. We also bring up a constellation just to show you where the planet is, but this is the red planet Mars. It's within the constellation Pisces, sometimes a tricky one to see, but Mars will be there through much of the fall season. So even, even if you see that it moves from the Pisces constellation, look for this beacon, this fairly bright red-orange dot in the sky, and that is Mars. And all of this is just easily seen with the naked eye. Now, if you have any questions or comments, Space Cadets, feel free to leave them in the section below. Until then, happy stargazing, and keep looking up.